All right, welcome back from break, everyone. Uh, thanks to Subspace Communications and Torrey Point for putting out a great spread there. Thank you. If you haven't had a chance yet, please fill out surveys. We value that information very much as we plan future nanons. Coming up next, we have Craig Labovitz with Deep Field Networks. He's going to talk to us about how the other half of the internet lives. Craig, welcome. Okay, what am I doing wrong? Pressing play. Oh, okay. Well, as I wait for the uh, slides to come up, today I'm going to tell you about a mystery. A mystery that's plagued me for the last several years. Two years ago, I did a bunch of work looking at how the internet was evolving, how the major hypergiants, the major traffic players were consolidating, internet traffic was changing, uh, the build out of CDNs and exchange points. And when I was doing that work, it was pretty clear what the top 50% of internet traffic was. It was the hypergiants. It was all the properties my mother and my wife knew about, the Facebooks, the Googles of the world. But as I was doing that work, there was always a strange element, very large traffic volumes that weren't part of the hypergiants. In fact, as I looked for them, they weren't part of any well-publicized websites or properties. Rather big mysteries. So this work is really looking at the other 50% of internet traffic. So as I said, it became clear as I was doing some of the earlier work about 2010 that the same ASN, same CIDR blocks, same data centers kept showing up again and again and again in the data. And it was never quite clear to me who these folks were, what they did, why they actually, some of these folks had like one or two percent of all internet traffic that was going to some of these ASN and some of these data centers. But if you went to their webpage, they had these small little European companies as customers that I'd never heard of. And it clearly wasn't these little companies selling tires and widgets and umbrellas that were generating one to two percent of all internet traffic. So I spent a lot of time asking around. I asked all the major operators, I asked uh, lots of folks in the nano community, you know, I'm seeing these ASN, do you know why they have this number of terabits per second of traffic? And you know, the nice thing about the nano community is asking around, everyone had theories. And you know, uh, the other nice thing about the nano community is that uh, not only do they have theories, but they're pretty sure of their theories. But when you actually ask them, great, so Least Web is doing this. How do you know that? Uh, generally, it was uh, a shrug. But they would insist even more strenuously that, in fact, uh, their theory was, was accurate, as I'm sure many of you know, arguing uh, with, with your colleagues. So the mystery was, where is all this traffic coming from? If you actually look at NetFlow, you generally come up empty. These are you know, mil thousands and hundreds of thousands of different IP addresses, typically uh, all behind URL or, or application level load balancers. Uh, tools come up empty. Whois doesn't tell you much. DNS doesn't tell you much. Uh, some of the sites actually go out of their way to obfuscate their business or obfuscate their ownership structure. Some are using short lived DNS. Uh, if you go to the websites, uh, often you'll get uh, you know, the load balancer, or uh, more frequently than not, you'll get insulted. Uh, this is, uh, you know, you're, you're too stupid. This site is not for you. Other sites uh, insulted my, my mother and my family and, and my heritage. So today, all will be revealed. I will tell you what is the other 50% of the traffic, where it's going. And in fact, as my uh, colleague likes to joke, it turns out I have an exhaustive list of many of these sites now. It took a bunch of work. Uh, it actually took us a few months. Uh, we actually did a lot of stuff. It turns out it's not one thing. To actually identify all of these major sites, you have to use a variety of techniques, techniques combine them together. Uh, there's math involved, and this is not a methodology talk. I'll do a paper, and those of more academic bent can attend those types of conferences. But we spent a while collecting data, doing a lot of work, spinning up VMs around the world, and we found out who those 50% of internet traffic were. Uh, this is really a best effort. Uh, we believe it's representative. 
And before I go forward, I want to make explicit that we'll be talking about sites that have varying degrees of morality, legality. Uh, I have no opinion, well, I do have opinions on these, but the talk isn't about those opinions and we're not getting into any of the copyright or other issues. We do have a blog post today uh, that's out with a little more detail and we will have a paper coming out shortly. So now I know the suspense is building. What is this 50% of internet traffic? Who is it? Where is it coming from? Well, the conventional wisdom, I'll, I'll give you the answer now. It is file sharing, P2P, and adult video uh, is a massive volume of internet traffic. Shocking, I know, to all of you in, in the audience. But what's really interesting, I think, about this massive traffic volume is that the conventional wisdom, at least you know, as you talk to folks or Hacker News or Slashdot, is that you know, adult video is everywhere, every nook and cranny of the internet. Uh, same with file sharing and P2P. It's just all over the place, completely distributed. And it turns out, as you look at the data, what really is the most striking thing as you look through uh, these you know, terabytes and terabytes of data is that no. In fact, far from being spread out, you have in all of these industries, all these you know, more or less niche industries, you have incredible consolidation of supply chain, of hosting providers, colo providers, ad providers, they all use more or less the same folks. And you see similar things in other industries because many of these have specialized needs. Uh, you know, it's interesting, the adult video is a very specialized industry with the payments. File sharing has fascinating business model. But again, very, very, I think, centralized uh, infrastructure. So this talk, this talk is a brief tour of a uh, very large volume of internet traffic that is actually supported by a surprisingly, at least to me, very small number of companies. Particularly, we're going to focus on uh, file sharing, P2P, and adult traffic today, uh, and with a focus on the infrastructure that supports it. So first, file sharing is a bit hard to, to define. At least, you know, the New York Times had a kind of an interesting piece uh, around the mega upload. The piece was all about how do you know, all the sites look alike, you know, if they're going after mega upload, Dropbox is next, box.net is next, no one can really tell. You know, it, it turns out that, I, I think at least it, superficially, that's true. If you go to any of the file sharing websites, they all look identical. They have similar graphics, even similar fonts in some. I mean, they're all playing by the same playbook. Uh, somewhat ironically, even some of the known file sharing ones have very strict, uh, perhaps cynically, DMCA takedown notices and staunch warnings against file sharing is not allowed here, even though that's 99% of their business. And, uh, but uh, rather than get into the business of what is file sharing or not, I think what we decide to do in this talk is allow the industry to self-classify. So if you go to one of the hundred of uh, file sharing search sites, you can right now, all of you have your laptops, go into Google, try to download, uh, type in download man on a ledge. You'll come up with many of these search sites. And in turn, these search sites point to the file sharing hosting sites. Uh, there's a couple hundred of them. Generally though, uh, I've yet to find in looking at 50 or 60 of these we surveyed, none of them actually point shockingly to Dropbox uh, or to box.net. They all actually point to the same set of other hosting providers. So if you have any mystery or you know a New York Times reporter that's confused, uh, you can point them uh, to any of these websites and it should help with some of the confusion. Uh, the only other note I'd have is uh, please don't actually download uh, Man on a Ledge. If for no other reason, it's an awful movie. Uh, I should also point out, uh, the file sharing sites have a very different notion of verified than I have. Uh, some of these actually go to files, but they're, they're not man on alleged movie. They're, uh, I, and please don't go to them because they're not appropriate, some of the things behind these links uh, for a, a mixed uh, professional audience. <laughs> so file sharing, uh, I don't have enough time to get into it, but it's a fascinating business model. And as with other industries, you have very specialized partners, very specialized ecosystem as the money flows through it. But generally it breaks down into a couple of categories of advertisement supported. You have the folks that are actually paid for search. 
Uh, you actually have to uh, pay them $10 before they'll actually give you the hidden URL in Rapid Share or uh, previously make an upload or file Sonic. Uh, there's others that you just pay to actually access the file or for the storage. Uh, so really kind of an interesting business model and we spent a, uh, this isn't part of the talk, but spent a bunch of time looking who are the different partners, uh, how they interacted and what's the money flow uh, through this particular industry. So file sharing overall, huge part of internet traffic. Uh, it depends where you measure, but broadly in North America, up to 10% at, at any given time of all consumer traffic. Uh, generally though, from a fairly small percentage of consumers, about one to 2% of actual uh, end, uh, end uh, sub consumer subscribers. And you know, has some very similar patterns uh, in terms of the diurnal nature and uh, some other uh, sort of stationary properties to peer to peer. But the most interesting slide is this one, or this and the next one. So the real question is, you know, file sharing, uh, it's all over the internet, there's hundreds of different file sharing sites, but what's amazing is these hundreds of file sharing sites all use the same colos. And it's not particularly by accident, it's that this is how these industries evolve and there's a variety of reasons why this happens. But I can't actually read my slide in front of me, nor can I read that, but I'll, I'll do this from memory. Uh, this is the uh, slide from January 18th, 2012, in the hours just before the coordinated global raid on mega upload and uh, dot, I forget his name, Kim.com, which uh, I always thought was a fantastic uh, name. You'll see that on January 18th, mega upload was the giant. Uh, Mega Upload uh, owned about 30-40% of all file sharing traffic using Carpathia in the US, uh, LeaseWeb, and a few other providers. And you'll see that everyone else was pretty far behind. You had, you know, Putlocker, uh, a bunch of other folks. Uh, and I didn't have enough room on the slide to list everyone, but they're generally in the other bucket. But when you look at where they're all going, again, it's the same data centers, the same hosting providers. Not a whole lot of uh, variety or, you know, it's pretty homogeneous. Uh, set. Though, as I said, it actually takes quite a bit of effort to identify not only what's a file sharing site, but the, the infrastructure they're using. So, this is January 18th, 2012. And then, in a matter of hours, the global file sharing world changed. One to two percent of all internet traffic dropped overnight, at least for an hour or two. Uh, and uh, for some of the other file sharing sites, this was a gold mine. So who won? Uh, who are the winners or losers, if there's winners or losers in this? Uh, well, Putlocker really came out ahead. I, I don't really have a lot of insight into why. Though I've been reading a lot of the discussion. Uh, you know, if you actually search for this stuff, you can, you know, there's a lot and a lot of traffic from the different file sharing folks on why they prefer one site over another. But uh, Putlocker came out ahead, uh, the industry kind of rejiggered, and today we're basically back up to the same traffic level, uh, though uh, you know, we're not using Carpathia anymore. Instead, it's LeaseWeb and a few other providers enter uh, the top 10 or so of the uh, global file sharing uh, traffic sources. So you know, the interesting thing about file sharing is there's hundreds of distinct domain names out there if you actually spend some time, you'll find out that many of these domain names and what looks like separate companies are actually all the same company. Uh, generally, it's pretty hard to tell with adult video and with file sharing what the corporate structure is. Generally, I only get a really good idea when they sue each other because in the court documents, the, the ownership structure comes out a bit. But really, you've got 10 of these sites contributing 70% and you're just at four colos, you know, LeaseWeb, uh, Chupa, a few others, uh, basically own 85% of the file sharing market. So not very distributed, highly, highly localized, and Putlocker, the new winner. So that's a, a segue. I, I don't know how it's a segue, but I'll move into adult video now. And again, I'm not making any moral judgment. These are just very large traffic sources that often aren't documented, aren't discussed, and certainly uh, if you go to a lease web homepage, you know, they're not really advertising. Uh, who their major file sharing uh, customers are. But the adult video world also is really, really interesting economy, uh, how they do the link sharing and the file sharing. Uh, what's interesting to me is most of the traffic is CDN based, 
all the DRM, all the billing, and all the other stuff comes from a very, very small number of specialized players. Again, very specialized ecosystem. Uh, most of the actual traffic volume, which again is video, uh, comes from the CDNs. And what's kind of cute is the CDNs make an effort to generally segment. All of the red light traffic is in its own little cider blocks, own little DNS hierarchy. Uh, you know whenever you reach any of these, you might not recognize the site name, uh, but you know that anything in these blocks is adult video. Uh, most of the CDNs are involved at least to some degree in, in adult video, and again, you know, no crime, not making any judgment. Uh, though it is interesting, folks like Akamai have clearly decided it's just not part of their business model, which you know, may be a luxury of, of, of the market leader, perhaps. But as with the, the file sharing, uh, again, there's specialized market, and even you know, what you notice as you look through the different websites, the file sharing, the P2P seed box folks, uh, all try to sell, they all have messaging, but they don't want to, they're not very direct. None of the file sharing uh, large colos come out and say, you know, we're supportive of this industry, this is what we do. Similarly with adult, you have, uh, I forget if this, I think this is like Enforce. You have things like, uh, you know, we don't ask what you stream, when you stream, how you stream, you can stream with us, just please don't break, break any international laws. And again, specialized payment, hosting providers uh, as well. This is what adult uh, video looks like today as you look at the uh, underlying infrastructure. There are thousands and thousands of different domain names and URLs. It turns out every fetish gets its own URL and own domain name. And by the way, there are a lot of fetishes. <laughs> But the major players are Xvideo tends to be one of the largest ones, uh, followed by free cams and, you know, again, fairly well distributed. But what's interesting, if you look at the red lines, that's the DRM, the payment, the control traffic, all going to the same specialized providers. Uh, typically, all your, you know, most of them are, a lot of them are European. And then we have got the global CDNs, uh, number one, two, three, and four, uh, anonymized, I don't know. Not, we're not naming names, uh, at least of uh, folks that might be in this audience. So that's adult traffic. And I'll finish off the talk uh, with the rise and fall and rise of P2P. So P2P used to be massive. P2P back you know, seven years ago was going to be the end of the internet. Circuits were filling up, the world was ending, uh, folks start, started to deploy DPI, uh, you know, it was a huge, huge problem. And then, for a variety of reasons, including carriers throttling, uh, RAA notices, um, that P2P just was awful, uh, you know, the performance, and, you know, it, it declined overall globally. Uh, I found that in some of the research work I did, and a number of other uh, commercial companies and researchers all documented the rather steep decline, and that's the kind of graph on the right there, or left, depending. So P2P was declining, disappearing as a major source, still sizable in some networks, 20%, but overall the trend was clear. File sharing was being replaced by, excuse me, P2P was being replaced by file sharing. But then the world changed again. What changed? The cloud. And HD and Blu-ray movies changed as well, uh, forcing the video requirements. So P2P was awful. Uh, I know none of you, you know, use P2P to download movies, but if you had tried, you could spend hours to find out you didn't get the movie you expected. It was so much easier to go to Mega Upload and just click on the link and download or pay, pay your $5. But what really changed is uh, P2P uh, really started to adopt the cloud. Before, P2P was dorm rooms talking to consumers over throttled, you know, n megabit links. Today, from uh, maybe 60 or 70 different providers of any size, you can buy for $25 a month unlimited bandwidth, 250 gig storage, pre-configured the latest torrent code and maintained for you, and you can host it conveniently in Europe which not coincidentally is outside the jurisdiction of perhaps the, the US uh, movie and record industry. And you can now get streaming. You know, the other thing is the P2P uh, market, at least the high end, is really competitive, right? 
you, you're judged or the software automatically will calculate your download based on your upload and it's all about the ratios. So, you know, it's incredible change to go from, you know, a DSL to a gig E uh, in a data center. Uh, so we've seen uh, the emergence of Extreme C, Data Seed Box, just hundreds of these guys. Uh, still a small percentage of the P2P market, but growing uh, fairly rapidly and being marketed fairly uh, rapidly. And uh, we're, uh, you know, especially starting to see an uptake, I think, post some of uh, the mega upload changes. But again, with, with uh, file sharing and adult video, it's kind of interesting. If you actually look at where the major trackers live, where the major seed boxes live, it is really fairly highly centralized. Uh, OVH, Lease Web again shows up, SoftLayer, Single Hop, and a few others. And, uh, you know, I think this happens in all different segments of, of the economy or different markets. Uh, with the case of like OVH, if you have a seed box, uh, you know, OVH does a little bit of active marketing, but you also want to be closest to the other seed box, seed boxes. So there's a little bit of a network effect, uh, Metcalf effect, whatever you want to call it, where uh, you now expect a huge portion going across OVH data centers is just seed boxes sharing the same files to each other again and again, as well as, by the way, quite a bit of the P2P traffic is now your customers getting traffic uh, incredibly inefficiently from the seed boxes in Europe. And you'll see, if you do some Google searches, you'll see the community of uh, file sharing argue over who's the best. If you're curious, OVH is not the best, though they are the cheapest. So they, they have first place uh, right now globally. So a very brief tour to finish off the talk. Uh, if you want to know where the largest uh, Russian uh, P2P seed uh, was, it is satisfyingly in an old bunker which if you read the Google Translate text, they got cheap due to the radiation. Uh, but uh, it, uh, again, I, uh, I, I'm sure I could get a better translation. Uh, I sh I'm sure I could get a more accurate translation. It would not be better. Uh, somewhat depressing. I mean, this isn't nearly as cool. A lot of, uh, this is uh, file sharing in the UK. Brand new data center, uh, the most uh, efficient in Europe which I'm struggling with all the glass windows, exactly the, how that is going to work with their, their cooling uh, and their uh, energy. But if you want to, to see where the, uh, the file sharing is actually coming from, small number of data centers, and here's a picture of another. So my final slide before questions. Uh, file sharing, P2P, adult video are huge, 30%, maybe a bit more, depending where you are, uh, what your audience base is. What's really interesting, uh, particularly, I used to be an academic long ago, but I'm fascinated by uh, the consolidation of the shared infrastructure and the uh, ecosystem, economic ecosystem that ha has developed around these companies uh, that really leads to very specialized needs, targeted sales strategies by the different vendors in the cyber supply chain. And as I blogged this morning, I think the, the biggest uh, observation I have is about the mega upload takedown. Uh, it did not end file sharing, uh, didn't even interrupt it. It did, however, make it staggeringly inefficient, as most U.S. file sharing now is going to centers in Europe. Uh, and so perhaps the biggest change, and you know, it's a very dynamic market uh, that we're watching as we see, uh, and, the, and the market is such a huge volume of traffic it really can have significant impact on carrier I, uh, IX decisions, peering decisions, uh, and the like. And with that, uh, I've got uh, six minutes, and this is an awesome countdown clock uh, for questions. So especially in the P2P wait, wait, case... you have to introduce yourself, Jake. Oh, Jake Kuhn, IP Infusion. So especially in the P2P case, um, as you know, a lot of software distribution models are increasingly relying on P2P distribution, um, probably some file sharing as well. But um, have you started drilling down into the origins of the supply chain for some of this traffic? Yeah, we can track the Akamai stuff. I forget what the, the company they bought is called now. It's escaping me. But we can track the different types. I mean, there's lots of different types. Skype and, uh, you know, the Akamai commercial stuff and this bunch of the games all are types of P2P. But we can track them individually. And have you noticed any kind of new trend or any, at some point there was a, a 
quantum change in the type of traffic or as in the industry moved to this sort of newer model for distributing bits and bytes? Yeah, I mean, this data set is a fairly short one, so I really don't have longitudinal, uh, you know, going over time, longitudinal, uh, longitudinal data on that. Uh, I've only really been tracking, uh, you know, just fairly recently. Thanks. Dave Temkin, Netflix. So I noticed that you um, mentioned a bunch of hosters in there, but you anonymized the CDNs. So what was, what was the reasoning behind that? Uh, you know, I, I, I think that's a fair question. Uh, I think. Uh, what's that? There, there's a lot of those hosters in this room. There's yeah. only some of those CDNs in this room, so it's kind of interesting uh, direction to go with that. Yeah, you know, I, I think it's a fair question. Initially, we had uh, had no names, uh, and then it looked a little silly. So, uh, but I, I think I think it's a fair question. But no answer. <laughs> uh, you know, I. Uh, I could I could just leave you to Randy because I'm sure he'll have something yeah. more pedantic. Randy Bush, IJ. Um, I hope you're going to do the longitudinal um, because there are some interesting aspects. What will be the reaction to the mega upload takedown, um, and how will the market and the technology they use respond to that? Will they distribute more? Um, um, will they go to BitTorrent more? Um, what's going to happen? I presume Mega Upload got taken down because you or somebody like you with connections to Leo looked and said, there's the biggest one, let's go shoot it. Um, the other side is, have you looked at the payment flow and how that's done because it's pretty amazing. I learned a little about it by accident by picking a random partner at dinner and they happen to be in the payment industry for the adult market. And that's very concentrated and it's very, um, it's pretty different. It's pretty different. And I once had lunch with a so I can, I can, I, you know, it's all about meals for me. Um, it's um, I had lunch with a, an adult content provider, and I found out that in America, most of the adult content providers' ownership lives in Florida, because Florida state law says that you cannot confiscate somebody's primary residence. So they all have enormous assets involved in their primary residence in Florida. I mean, this is all weird stuff. Yeah, you know, I, I knew that it was mostly based in Florida, but I thought it was the weather. <laughs> I, 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 I hadn't heard that. No, it's not. Oh. It's because they can't take your primary residence. You build a $10 million primary residence and there's yeah. your assets. Yeah. Uh, so just to answer the questions, I only remember one of them now. Uh, I, 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 I was not involved, for the record. I had nothing to do with the mega upload uh, takedown. We were looking at this, this before, but uh, that, that's uh, nothing at, at all to do with us. Uh, and then, yeah, I've, I have no idea what your second question was in, anymore. <laughs> Does anyone in the audience remember since he's walked away? Uh, yeah, I remember now. These you, people the, aren't stupid, then there's a lot of money involved. Yeah. Um, so the, they're going to react. And they're, I don't know if they're going to change business model, but they're going to change technology model, I presume. Yeah, now, will it spread to more uh, distributed hosting? Will it spread to more PNP? Will the payment channels change, et cetera? Yeah, you know, I, I think it's interesting to watch. You know, I, I will say, I'm not a lawyer, but, you know, this really, I, I think my, Mega Upload really was different in the, to the degree they didn't make as much an effort. Uh, to, uh, I think, obscure what really was their core business proposition. You know, all the others really do, I believe, have, you know, legitimate, uh, you know, some legitimate business and there's safe harbor and, you know, just looking at the, the website, it's very hard to tell, uh, you know, what business they're, they're in. So, you know, I think you will see the file linking and how those things interact with each other change. Uh, you know, I don't think you'll see as much that's immediately available on a Google search bringing up the latest Hollywood movies. 
Uh, may, much more of it may be behind a paywall or other things like that. 13 seconds left. If there's anyone quick, they can ask a question. Okay, thank you.